Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of DCS World and in fact my very first commentated version episode of DCS World and today I'm gonna show you an ace flight in the Su-33 flanker and while I'm not exactly an expert in DCS and um, jet fighting in general I'm not a complete and utter beginner either because I've I do have quite some experience to look back onto. I've uh, flown most of the chains titles back in the day. I've flown some more casual stuff like Strike Fighters, as well as Flaming Cliffs 1 and 2 uh, before DCS World was actually a thing. So while I'm not exactly an expert, I'm not a bloody beginner either. Right, so as I said, I'm flying the Su-33, which is the navalized version of the flanker, and uh, don't quote me on that, but as far as I know, the differences between the Su-27 and the 33 are fairly limited. Uh, the Su-33 has canals, which to me make it a more uh, interesting looking aircraft than the plain Su-27. and um, it's also got two more hard points. You can actually take two more missiles as compared to the Su-27. Uh, the Su-27 can take up to 10 missiles if I'm not mistaken and the Su-33 can take 12 of those. Uh, provided you don't take the ECM ports and wingtips, which I usually do because well, it's, it's an extra layer of defense against any and all radar guided missiles, so why not take them? Um, as I said, I'm flying the Su-33. I've taken six R-27ER semi-active radar homing missiles, as well as two R-27ETIR missiles and two R-73IR missiles. And while the flanker doesn't have the benefit of carrying any active radar-guided missiles like the F-15 or the MiG-29S, um, it does have other benefits. The uh, biggest of them, probably, or to me at least, is the tactical display that you can see on the right hand side, the little MFD right, um, right on the instrument board, uh, which is, I don't know, uh, you could call it kind of like a cheat map, because um, it's linked to the aerial uh, warning aircraft, and it, it basically shows you any and all contacts that the AWACS aircraft actually pick up. So it really, really makes situational awareness so much easier as compared to the F-15 and MiG-29, basically, where you have to uh, just rely on your own radar to get the information that you need to stay alive in the air. And here in the Su-27 and the 33 as well, you've got this tactical display which shows you friendly and enemy contacts, the heading, and how fast they are. I don't, uh, um, I'm not quite sure if you can actually also read out altitude out, out of the contacts, but I, uh, you can definitely read out the speed out of these contacts by looking at the length of the, you know, like the tip of these contacts on the map. Right, um, so I said the Su-33 only has semi-active radar homing missiles, but um, 27 ERs are actually pretty good. They are a darn sight better than the AIM-7M Sparrows on the F-15, which are horrible. Uh, the 27 um, is actually superior to the Sparrow in pretty much every regard. It's got better range, it's faster, it's more maneuverable, and it's also more reliable in my experience. It doesn't lose lock as easily as the Sparrow. Um, and don't quote me on that, I could be wrong, but I think the 27ER actually has the, the highest range of any of the guided missiles on any of the Flaming Cliffs aircraft in DCS World. I think it actually surpasses the R-77 and the AMRAM uh, by 
a few kilometers and it's also very fast. I think it hits like Mach 3.5. So it has good range and it's very fast. It's going to uh, only give your opponent a couple seconds from launch uh, until it's actually at the target and up your ass. So, yeah. Also, in my experience, it's rather hard to actually achieve an A14 DCS, uh, unlike in most of the propeller sims I'm flying, like Cliffs, uh, Battle of Stalingrad, War Thunder, etc. Um, simply because you're pretty much re uh, reliant and depending on your missiles to do the job for you, because you just bring yourself into a good position, you lock up your enemy, you fire off your missile, and then <laughs> it's basically down to the gods of RNG, if, whether your missile hits or not. Um, and while you've got like 10 or even 12 tries in the Su-33, um, a lot of times what I'm experiencing is that people, even if I'm firing at fairly short ranges of uh, 20 kilometers and lower, is that you can just uh, turn around, engage after burner and just outrun the missile straight. Um, other times they just spam uh, chaff and flares and the missile is defeated and also what you can uh, encounter quite often is that missiles just completely lose lock for no apparent reason which may either be uh, network related or yeah, maybe just the, the missile got confused by a ground clutter. Um, uh, there's room for speculation, but uh, these are just my observations. Right, so anyways, let's jump to the first encounter and I'll give you some of my thoughts and how I went into these fights. Right, so about eight minutes later, I am well within the combat area and there's actually an enemy, a jamming enemy, right in front of me as you can see in the tactical map. And he's not alone, there's actually two more aircraft which are going to pop up one by one. There's the second one. I've got the, f the left one now uh, locked up via radar, but I am slewing in for a different target now. I'm going to select the rightmost, which is going to turn away once I lock him up and I'm switching from my semi-active radar homing to my infrared roaming, roaming um, R27s uh, which are actually a very very handy weapon in the Russian arsenal because they are pretty much medium range missiles and there you hear the RWR go off. One of the three guys just fired a missile at me so I wait for launch permission on the R27 ET I fire it off and I turn away. Um, the R27ET is actually pretty much, you could call it uh, a standalone and uh, fire and forget weapon because it's uh, infrared guided, it doesn't need guidance from the launch aircraft and it's got fairly good range depending on uh, several factors. The IR um, sensor does have its quirks and it can be easily distracted with flares if the enemy uh, knows you're firing at him with an ET. He just has to dump a few flares and that's all it takes. And now I've got two enemies on my ass and I'm trying to get the heck out of here. And there's another missile launch. I'm going to push the aircraft down. I don't see a missile trail so it has to be either a long range shot or maybe that's an F-15 firing AMRAMS because they have pretty much smokeless motors. Um, the missile has got to have lost lock. There's another one on the way though and I'm still flying towards my own lines and I'm descending as I go. Um, so I've expanded one of my R-27 ETs and um, I still got all of my six ERs left, one ET and um, the two archers. I'm still being pursued, I'm being fired upon. I see the missile trail here, but I am 
I've got my ECM on, I've got shafts. Uh, I'm throwing shafts at the missiles like candy. And I do make it out uh, just fine here. I'm going to drop down on the deck and without too much trouble. Uh, one of the bandits that's actually giving the chase, I didn't know at the time, of course, but in retrospect, if I can, of course, tell you it's a Mirage 2000 and he really wants to see me dead. And here I'm deciding, screw this, I'm going to turn around. As I see some friendlies also in the area, I get a little bit more cocky. I turn around and I'm going to see a jamming contact up ahead, which is the Mirage. Any second now. There, yeah, there he was for a second. There he is. Um, it's also visible on the tactical map. And I'm going to switch over to my semi active radar homing missiles, which also have a home on jam function. And I'm firing one of the uh, R27 ERs at him. And the missile is already on its way, and he's about to fire a missile himself any second now. Yeah, I'm being locked up. Missile is on its way, and fortunately, I do have this hill right in front of me. So I'm just turning to the right to get the hill between me and him, which is of course going to defeat the missile because uh, there's no way the missile can track me through a solid object like a hill. And I'm switching to my helmet-mounted side. There's the missile which just passed me, and I've just caught a glimpse of the enemy aircraft. We are. Just, we've just merged and I'm turning hard, I'm trying not to black out here because that would be horrible now in this situation. And I'm, I just locked them up again, I've switched over to the archers, I'm firing one and it's going to wreck him head on. There he goes, that's one Mirage down. Right, so that was, that was I think a fairly good a uh, way to handle this situation right here. Right, so um, I'm not exactly sure if there's if the third enemy is still around or if he uh, ran off towards his lines. But anyways, I'm heading towards my own lines and I'm going to get some more altitude and then go back into the combat area. Again, several minutes later, I've got another enemy on both my radar and my tactical display. He's jamming again, and we're going to go offensive on each other. I'm about to lock him up and fire an ER Alamo. There it goes. And just a few seconds later, he does the same. I, I don't know if it, it was a flanker, in fact, or maybe an F-15. He's turning to the left, and his missile just lost uh, lock uh, while I still kept my lock up, but nonetheless my missile is defeated and uh, it's not going to hit him. I'm going to fire off two missiles here now, actually in the, the Soviet doctrine of firing an, a radar and an IR guided missile in close succession, but unfortunately neither of those two missiles actually hit my ER loses lock because I turned away in order to turn away from the missile that was fired at me and the ET doesn't hit either and I've lost sight of him I'm just trying to find him because he was actually fairly close by switch to my helmet sight I can't quite see him so I'm switching to one of the dogfight modes trying to actually get a lock here I see some kind of splash on the ground, but it's actually not him. He's actually still in the air somewhere here. And I'm, I'm about to notice him pass me underneath in just a short while. There he is. I saw a glimpse of him. There he is. He's very fast. He just passed me. And I'm turning to race after him. Got him locked up via the IRST. And just as I'm firing one of my archers, he gets hit by some missile fired by another aircraft, which is too bad, because otherwise that would have been a nice kill. So yeah, I've, I've wasted four missiles here, unfortunately, and in the end did not get the kill anyway. 
So, after a longer pause of the action and nothing really happening, I decided to chase down an AI bomber, which I think is 222. Right in front of me, I've got him locked up and about to close in to guns range. And I didn't really pay attention to my tactical map, but there's going to be a furball um, not too far off. And I'm being locked up by some kind of fighter, and I want to close in fast and just get this done. With the cannon, I'm now in range and about to fire. Unfortunately, my cannon fire right here does not quite suffice to bring the bomber down. It's badly damaged, but it's still up. And I want to get another pass in, but then I'm being locked up again. And I decide now it's not worth the hassle. Uh, and decide to turn around instead. Right here. I'm turning around out of the combat area. I'm having a look at the tactical map and I see there is a dogfight not far off to my left hand side. And I switch over to my switch back to my normal radar mode and first off I thought no I'm not going to take part in this but then I just decided no I'm going to turn around and going to help that friendly who's being engaged. Uh, there you see the smoke train actually of the badly damaged uh, Tupolev bomber. I don't know where it went, if it actually went down, but I don't think I got the kill for it, so I guess it went back. Uh, you can see some flares right there of the dogfight and some missile trails, and I'm about to lock this guy up here in front of me. I'm going full after burner to close in fast, and I momentarily side of him, there he is, he just popped the flare again and again and I'm switching over to my Alamos, there's some missile trail that somebody just fired on him, I'm firing as well I've got launch permission so I'm pretty f uh, sure that's an enemy and he got splashed and there's the other aircraft and I'm not quite sure if that's uh, friendly but I don't get a launch permission so I suppose that is in fact a friendly Su-27 right there so that's my third kill, um, fairly easy, I mean the, the enemy was preoccupied with the other aircraft and I just snuck in and ninja the kill, but a kill is kill, right? Again several minutes later I'm heading again towards the center of the hotly contested battle area and there on the tactical map you can actually see an enemy and a friendly heading straight towards each other and uh, I am about to ninja the kill here as well and there's actually a German saying which goes like uh, wenn sich zwei streiten freut sich der dritte which means when two are in a crawl the third one's going to be happy as he's going to basically ninja anything the two might be fighting over. There's another enemy about uh, just coming in as well. So it's two friendlies, two enemies, as, as you could see there on the tactical map. Um, the enemy just fired, and they're about to pass each other and go into a knife fight. And I'm just waiting to close the distance some more. I'm at about 20 kilometers range now, about to hit 15 kilometers, and I just fired at about 16, 17, 17 kilometers. But I've got a lot of speed and a lot of altitude, so that's going to be a clean hit. And just about as my missile strikes home, we can see a missile trail right there. And as I didn't get an RWR warning, I figured it must be an IR missile. I dropped a bunch of flares and luckily enough the IR missile did not find its target. But, uh, guys, do you remember the second enemy that was heading this way, uh, who popped up on the tactical map? He's actually still uh, flying towards the fight, or where the fight actually was, and he's about to give chase to me, and I'm dropping down, and I'm trying to get the heck out of here. He's going to lock me up and give chase for several minutes, and... Um, I'm going to fast forward to the point where I turn and face him. So this guy actually 
uh, chased me for about a minute or a minute and a half and he's now decided to turn around because he sees a bunch of other friendlies or he's just switched targets and he's not interested in me anymore and that's my time to strike turning around trying to make him out on the radar and I think yeah, that should be him right in front of me. He's actually jamming. And I'm about to lock him up and fire an 27ER at him. And at this close range, uh, not even turning around and hitting the off the burners, we'll get here out of this tricky spot. And right there that's my fifth kill making this an ace flight and I'm turning around as I'm low of missiles and on fuel and make my way for home so I decided to put my aircraft down on the nearest uh, airfield which in this case was Novorossiysk and I swear to God, someone, either a player, a human player, or an AI, I don't know, someone or something locked me up for a good five minutes in my return flight, and my R.W.R. was just screaming like a possessed demon. Um, and, yeah, so I cut it out. It's just basically the R.W.R. screaming at me for <laughs> several minutes. So, yeah, this concludes my flight in a Su-33, uh, my first ever ace sortie in this particular aircraft in DCS, and I hope you enjoyed listening to some of my thoughts and impressions of this flight, and there's nothing else for me to say other than uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in one of my future ones.